Hello and thank you for watching my other video presenting the new Ford Transit and Tourneo Custom and the Plug-in Hybrid version. It truly is a really cool car and first-in-class hybrid vehicle, also first hybrid van from Ford ever. I've noticed that there are many questions in regard to how this car works and so I decided to answer them for you. As some of you know, I had an opportunity to spend a couple of days with the car in September 2019 as one of the first people to drive the final product. So let's start and clarify all the facts about Ford Custom Plug-in Hybrid that is supposed to arrive on the market in early 2020. I will list all the questions in the description of this video with a time to click on and this way after the video you may again jump directly to the question that you are looking for an answer to. Here are your questions and the answers to them. First of all, what is the power and torque? The power is 126 horsepower or 92.9 kilowatts. What's the torque? Torque is 355 newton meters. What is the top speed? The top speed is limited to 120 kilometers per hour while the car shows that as 125 on the speedometer. This is not to be modified. Some people were asking whether you can preset specific speed, but no, there are no preset top speeds to choose from. What is the acceleration? 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 0 to 62 miles per hour. So according to my test in the second video that I've made, the car does 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in around 17 seconds and that was with three people on board and not fully charged the battery. It does very well below 80 kilometers per hour and 80 to 100 is getting a little bit slower. So if you're going to drive in the city, it's going to be pretty fast. Outside, not so much. So is there a difference in performance when the battery is fully charged and when there is no or very little electricity left? It was said that there really is no noticeable difference. However, I've noticed that when the battery was closer to draining, the car's power usage indicator would not go further than around 83 kilowatts, which is about 10 less than it would show earlier when the battery had more juice in it. What's the battery's capacity? It is 13.6 kilowatts when to charge the battery. So there are three ways to charge it. Plug the car to the power socket, that's number one. Then you may charge it by braking, that's number two. And you may be charging it with a petrol engine. So when the petrol engine is running, you may have the battery charged by it. Does the petrol engine drive the wheels? No, it does not. It works only as an electricity generator that uses petrol. Then what does the petrol engine do? First of all, it's a 1.0 liter EcoBoost petrol engine that's known from 2012. This engine works only as a generator, a range extender, some call it. What it does is it runs to provide electricity to the car's lithium ion battery pack that is being used by the electricity motor to power the wheels. So there is another engine, an electric engine that actually is connected to the wheels and which makes the car move. The petrol engine can also provide electricity directly to the electric motor and skip the battery in the process when the electric motor needs more power and the car is in the mode that doesn't focus on charging the battery. Speaking of modes, what are the driving modes? There are four of them and in this car they actually do matter a lot. All depends on the mode you choose at the moment and the modes are EV Auto, EV Now, EV Later and EV Charge. EV Auto lets the car decide which source of electricity to use, the battery or the petrol engine. Everything is done automatically and the car will use both depending on driving conditions. Overall, it will be using the battery and with time, there will be less and less electric range left for you. This is how it worked for me. Second mode, EV Now uses electric power only. The petrol engine will not turn on until you use all of the electric power. Third mode, EV Later is about storing the electric power that you currently have for you to be able to use it later. It is as simple as that. Your electric range will not drop while you are in this mode. And the fourth, last mode is called EV Charge and uses the petrol engine to power the vehicle and to charge the battery so that you're ready to use electricity only when you need to. Can you fully charge the battery with an engine? No, you cannot. You may charge the battery this way up to, I believe, 80%, which will give you 44 kilometers of electric range. I actually know I got this answer from an engineer, but I'm only 80% sure that it was exactly 80%. If I manage to check this at any point, I will either post it in the description or in the comments for you guys so that you know. Next question, what does the letter L mean on the transmission after D? So switching to L gives you much stronger regenerative braking. This means that every time you take your right foot off the accelerator, the car will be slowing down significantly, almost as if you were using brakes. And this way it is charging the battery, turning the car's motion into electricity. 
What's fun about this is that the braking may be so effective that the car may light up its stoplights to warn drivers behind that it's slowing down rapidly. This will work great in the city and allow you to stop without using brakes while recovering a lot of energy. All for free. What is the transmission in this car? So there is no transmission at all as there is an electric engine and they don't need a transmission. So one big thing is gone. If you'd like to compare it to anything, it's like CVT mostly. Actually with a petrol engine running, it behaves almost exactly like CVT with a petrol engine uh, like set at constant RPM at times and the experience is pretty much the same. Is it front wheel drive or rear wheel drive? It is front wheel drive only. What is the size of the transit van available? It's L1, H1, so shorter and lower, same with Tourneo, with a shorter body. Is it heavier or lighter than a regular Custom? The answer is that it's pretty much identical to the regular Custom. We've got additional weight of the battery pack, but we've got a lighter petrol engine up front. And also I'm not sure whether the fuel tank is actually not smaller and therefore lighter too. At the end we may say that the weight is unchanged. Watch the cargo space of the Transit van. It is exactly the same as in the regular Custom. It's 6.0 cubic meters. What is the van's maximum load? It is said to be 1130 kilograms, so over 1.1 tons. What warranty does Ford give? It's 8 year or 160,000 kilometers warranty on battery. I think that this is at the same time an answer to how long or how many cycles the battery will last, or after how many years it will have to be replaced. What would be the cost of replacing the battery after warranty? Well, no news about it. I'm sorry, I tried and asked but got no specific answer as it clearly seems not to be known yet. What if the battery drains and there is no electric range left? Well, nothing. Just the petrol engine will kick in and you will not be able to drive purely on electric power. As long as the petrol engine does not charge the battery a bit or you don't accumulate enough energy by regenerative braking. Or as long as you don't plug the car and charge it. During all that time you simply drive using the EcoBoost petrol engine. So let's reverse that situation and ask what if the car runs out of gas while there is electric range left. Then you'll drive on electricity till the battery dies and then you're done with no range left and in need of help. Just like any other car that runs out of fuel. But you may bring one liter of petrol in a bottle from the nearest petrol station and you may go again using that petrol. Can you start driving on electric power from the beginning? Well, the answer is yes, you can. However, note that the battery needs to be warmed up. So if it's very cold outside, the car may not let you do that. And we'll start off with a petrol engine to first warm up the battery and then you will be able to use the electricity only. What are the exact numbers? Well, no information was given. And anyway, that would not be possible for us to check on our own what temperature the battery has at what point. I don't think that we would have any influence on that at all. So that's a useless information in such case anyway. One of the main questions is what's the real fuel consumption? If you use electricity only, it is exactly zero liters per 100 kilometers. In the second case, knowing that you may drive up to 56 kilometers on electric power, after 100 kilometers, it could be as low as around two to four liters per 100 kilometers. So remember that in the last 44 kilometers or so, assuming that you will experience perfect conditions to use all of those 56 kilometers of electric range. So in that second part, you will still get some energy back thanks to regenerative braking and you can use it again, saving even more fuel, switching back to electricity only. After 500 kilometers, now mostly on petrol engine, it should be between seven and nine liters per 100 kilometers, unless it is highway driving, then I think it may be more because of not much braking and the car's not very aerodynamic shape. So let me make it clear. This car was designed for city use and charging it. That's the main point and that's when you get the most benefits of the hybrid powertrain. How long does it take to charge the battery? It takes up to 4.3 hours, which stands for four hours and 20 minutes with a regular 240 volt power socket and as quickly as 2.7 hours, which would be two hours and 40 minutes using a charging station. So remember that this says about charging it from zero to 100% and perhaps most users will not end up at 0% every time. When does the petrol engine kick in? When you set the driving mode that focuses on using the engine, EV later or EV charge, or when the battery drains or when the car sits in EV auto mode and decides to use the petrol engine. 
or it can also start if the battery is too cold or too warm. Hot didn't happen to me, but cold did happen. And then the car wouldn't let me drive using the battery only. It didn't take long for the battery to warm up though. It was in Sweden, it was really cold in the morning. So the car wouldn't want to start with the pure electric power. Can it tow? No, it cannot tow. And there are no values given in terms of what its towing capability would be. At this point, it is not meant to be towing stuff. Where is the battery located? It is under the floor around the middle of the car's length, slightly to the left of the car, like more to the driver's side. Where is the charging socket in the car? It is in the front bumper on the left side below the front lamp. So guys, that's all from me and I hope that you found this video as informative as possible and that it answered all your questions. If you have any more of them, please post them in the comments and I'll be answering them individually. So stay tuned and see you next time.